today, uh, let me tell you, I have an incredible guest, because uh, this guest comes directly from Hollywood. Uh, it's an incredible producer, an amazing actor. He's a writer. I mean, he, he just can do it all. And uh, my guest today is Arturo Mouchon, who is presenting us uh, a really in incredible project called The Pastor. It's a movie. It's a Christian movie with an amazing message. It's a, it's a, com it's a movie that is coming up in just a few months. So, uh, Arturo, welcome to Praise the Lord Salsa Style. ¿Cómo estás? Pastor, muy bien. Muchas gracias. Thank you for having me here. Arturo, you're Salvadorian. Yes. And I wanted to throw that because you just don't look Salvadorian. <laughs> you look, you look uh, French. You look uh, European. And obviously because I, I read that your family is from Europe. So tell us a little bit about your upbringing in El Salvador. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. My family is originally from Belgium, England, and Germany. But I was born and raised in El Salvador and for all uh, intensive purposes, Salvadorian guanaco, as they call us. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was a, a, a very happy upbringing uh, very chaotic because I, I, I even though I did not realize it at the moment I grew up amidst a civil war that spanned over 12 years and it was a very tragic way to grow up now that I look back at it because you grow up not unlike Colombia where bombs and bullets uh, and dead bodies are you know an occurrence of every day yeah and, and, and he just said it I'm Colombian uh, by all means if you wonder where I'm from I'm, I'm Colombian proud to be Colombian born in and, 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 but also American, and you also are American because yes. you came here when you were extremely young. Uh, you came to, uh, to study uh, here, actually, locally in Miami. Locally uh, Miami. Go to UM, and you attended probably some of the best universities um, yeah, locally here in Florida. Tell us a little bit about your studies and how you prepare from being a banker, because that's what you used to do. Yes. That's what you study. You study finances, you study numbers, and then suddenly you say, well, you know what? I wanted to become an actor. I wanted to start making movies. How did, does that transition happen? Yes, you're right. I actually studied finance in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, at Texas Christian University, TCU, as it's known, and, and became an investment banker. Started in El Salvador, trans transferred on to Miami to work for a German group called Dresner Bank. But since I was 12 years old, my dream had always been to be an actor, to wow. write stories, to make movies. And I started making videos, short movies, that um, were war-themed movies. That's all I knew. In uh, El Salvador. In El Salvador, yes. Qué tremendo. Yeah. In El Salvador. Uh, 12 to 16, that's all I did. And I have them. Uh, I'll show them to you someday. But then, as soon as I was here in Miami, uh, after having found my beautiful wife, Monica, I was inspired uh, by that union and decided that I was going to be the true version of myself, the true version that God wanted me to be, my passion. And that was the acting. So I started the Coconut Grove Playhouse uh, here in Miami. And uh, I fell in love with it, and I kept training and training. I studied at UM, took courses at Columbia, uh, everything. So you're really prepared. Okay, so yes. tell us about the transition. How, when and how did you decide that you wanted to make movies, that you wanted to be in the, in the industry? Because as you know, the film industry is not an industry that, um, I mean, secular is okay, but for Christians, it's, it's, it's little of, a little bit of like a dark place. So when do you decide, you know what, I'm going to just drop it all and I'm just going to move to Los Angeles, to Hollywood? Yeah, well, that, that happened after the first film that I put together, a major film production called um, Dream It Out Loud. With, with Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer yes. and, and uh, Heather Graham. Yes, and good many, movie. many wonderful actors. I, I shot that in New Mexico. And then when I was editing the movie, I moved to Los Angeles with my family. And I found myself in a very privileged position because I was in Paramount Studios, my next door neighbor was Steven Spielberg and David Geffen wow. was also there. Um, I got to be exposed to the best of the best of the industry and, and things looked fantastic for me. I was, I was shining. Um, that was 2007, 2008. Middle of 2008, as you know, the economy collapsed. And yes. Everything. Tell us what happened down. in your life. <laughs> From light, I went to darkness, complete darkness, because wow. all my projects... Uh, collapsed on my shoulders. I found myself without um, any financial uh, income. I lost everything with my wife and two young kids, and I didn't have uh, anywhere else to go but inside. Seek inside myself and find strength in my belief in God and, and, and in my union with Him. It's so, it's so interesting that you just mentioned that because uh, 2008, 
2009, your story was the story of millions of people. And maybe this is your story. This is the, the, the story that you've probably been living for the past five, six, seven, eight years that, you know, uh, the economy worldwide just collapsed and, and you were in a different position than you are now. But you know what? What's interesting, Arturo, is that out of all the projects, out of all the movies that you have proposed uh, uh, producers in Hollywood, yeah. uh, they were all secular movies. But then God touched you with this particular message and with this particular um, script. And then you just went crazy and you wrote uh, the script on the, the, the actual the, um, uh, manuscript for the pastor. Tell us what happened then. I actually wrote the story uh, for the pastor and, and then joined with my uh, uh, great creative partner, Deborah Goodwin, to write the, the screenplay. And she became the director of the film, as you know. But it was, it, it was in my darkest moments. Again, this is a second chapter mm. in darkness, total mm. darkness. Again, mm. was, I moved uh, uh, to New York City to uh, produce a film uh, by the name of The Two Lives of Maxi Kalpin that you know a lot about. Yep. Beautiful story that we will shoot soon. Uh, but things didn't come together. The financing didn't come together. Uh, again, I lost everything I had uh, a second time in New York. In the, the strongest winter was coming, and I had nowhere else to run. Again, nowhere else but the inside. The darkest hour. Yeah. And in the darkest hour, God gave you a second chance. And you know what? I just want to take a second and speak about this, because sometimes in our darkest hours is when God gave us the second chance. It is, it is before the dawn that it gets really, really, really dark. So I don't know where you are. I don't know in what place you are. I don't know what type of situation you are. But, but this, this is for you. If, you're, if you are in the darkest hour, just praise the Lord. Because that means that there's a new dawn. There's a new beginning. There's a new day. This is time to thrive. This is time to advance. Este es el tiempo de avanzar. This is, this is the time to move forward. Okay. So now the movie. Let's concentrate on the movie. So... Uh, you get the money, uh, you start filming the movie. What is the movie? What is the pastor about? What is the, the theme about? And, and, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to be showing um, some clips and, and the advance of the, the trailer of the movie. But tell us a little bit about, uh, about the movie. The, the pastor is really about a, a, uh, um, about a man, a, a former gang leader from uh, Brooklyn who ends up in solitary confinement in prison. And once he's in prison, he doesn't see anybody for a number of years, but he befriends a pastor. And this pastor mentors him, and he not only finds God, but he, he, he becomes a pastor himself. And wow. when he comes out of prison, he starts protecting his community, specifically the kids in the community. And, yes. and, and, and that is based on three years of research that I did in communities and jails uh, and gang With infested. The gun members, yes. Yes, and stuff yes. Like that. We, we were living a very tragic reality. Uh, every you know, every state in the United States faces that, as well as countries in Latin America. Tell us why it's so important. Uh, I mean, this is a movie that is, has been produced by a Hispanic, acted by Hispanics. It's in English. Yeah, completely and, in English, And yes. for the people that is watching us somewhere else that you, you speak Spanish, va a tener subtítulos. He's going to have subtitles. <laughs> claro, so don't claro. worry about that. But the, the movie, what's it so, what is so important about what, what, what you're doing with the Hispanic uh, uh, motion pictures? Uh, especially with the Christian, because the Christian, uh, as you've seen, it, it's been an uprising of, of new movies. Yes, uh, for sure. God is not dead, and heaven is for real. And so many wonderful Christian movies that actually uh, TBN uh, is it's, it's so proud to present and is so proud to show all the time. But um, uh, tell us why it's so important that we as Hispanics, that what we're doing with this particular uh, industry. Uh, the, the idea uh, from inception was twofold. First of all, to elevate the image we have as Hispanics I like that. in the United States and in the rest of the world through media, in this case, moving pictures or films. And it's been very tough for me to find, to identify myself with uh, characters, hmm. uh, archetypes, heroes yes. uh, that are Hispanic. We don't have any. We don't el have El Chapulín. Any. We have El Chapulín Colorado, right? Is the only one. So I, I'm committed to, to making it happen because we Amen. don't have him. We have El Zorro. We yes. haven't seen him in 20 years. I like that, El Zorro. We also have one, yes. We, we have uh, uh, El Mio Cid. Yes. We haven't seen him since Charlton Heston. Yes. And so this uh, person, this uh, man, with his deep spiritual transformation, his name is The Pastor. The, in pastor the, movie, in the movie is the first of many Hispanic heroes to come. Uh, I had the pleasure of seeing the movie, of course, but uh, uh, the movie has, has some 
some interesting um, uh, elements. Number one is the quality of the video. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very Nordic, very European style with a Western flavor. Yeah. And, yes. um, and, 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 but not only that, but the theme is not your typical, you know, good pastor thing. This is a pastor that goes to jail, yes. you know, for a crime, comes out of jail, you know, already a pastor, but then he has to confront other gang members. Yes. And that part I loved about the movie, how you have to make a decision whether you go back to who you used to be right. or you move forward with who you are now. So tell us a little bit about that. How, what do you think is that so important that we need to always move forward with the light? We need to always move forward with, with God and not just go back to our sin, to our darkness. Yes, yeah, so like you were saying, the, the idea was to elevate the uh, uh, sensibility and the quality of the pictures by creating something that's sophisticated for us Hispanics. Yes. Because we do have a very sophisticated taste in film, in entertainment. I do. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. I know you do. And the, uh, um, the, 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 the other element of it was to realize that, it, like I was saying in my own life, it doesn't matter where you find yourself as a human being. If you find the strength within yourself to seek for God, he will be there with you. I love that. And you know what? Let me take a, a moment just to say this, because that reminds me of uh, uh, David. And there's a scene that you're talking about David and his fight with Goliath. Yes. And that's so interesting because um, uh, David is this interesting character. He's one of my favorite characters because, you know, he's, he was not only a shepherd, he, you know, became the king. And he was the only one that did not call um, the Goliath, call him giant. Everybody called him a giant, a, a mighty warrior. But he just called him a, a just a... Uh, uh, a little thing, you know, he called him a, um, uh, somebody that he was not worthy. But there was an interesting uh, part in the Bible when, when uh, he had to find a strength in himself. And God lives within us. And, and, and I don't know who am I speaking to. I don't know who am I talking to. But if you're going through darkness, if you're going through a decision, whether it's coming back to your old self, whether it is to move forward with with God and with who you are, trust God. God changed you. And once, once, God, once Peter left the boat, he never came back to the boat. Once he left the boat for real, he doubted. He wanted to come back to the boat. In fact, he did come back to the boat, but then God came back and reminded him that he was not no more a fisher, a regular fisher, but he was a fisher of men. So just, just continue to move forward. Tell us about the movie. When is the movie coming up? The movie, we've been very fortunate. We have the same team that distributed The Passion of the Christ, handling all the marketing and distribution for the film. Wait a minute. Can you, can you say that again? The same people that distributed The, the Passion of the Christ, which was the, the biggest, the, 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 the best uh, uh, Christian and, and the spiritual movie ever made, is the same people that is, is distributing this movie? Yes, yes. Uh, we've been very fortunate. It, it's, it's been a... A long journey here, as you know, but the film is, is of such high quality that it touched them. It touched a lot of people along the way, and we're ready to come out in the fall. The date we have right now in the slate is the third week of September. Fabulous. Third week of September. We're going to go see the clip. So if you're watching, I mean, this is, this is going to really just blow your mind. So we're going to leave you with that clip about the pastor. Enjoy it. Read one passage every day. I feel the strength of his words. You are not allowed to have any contact with any former gang members. He knows my struggle. This place, take care of it, like if it was your own. Your church is right in the middle of a highly active neighborhood. It's a place I hope these kids can look to a better future than what these gangs have to offer. Please. What's going on here? If you don't want you here, just walk away, Pastor. No! He used to be these kids. Help us. You mock now! Hear me? It's up to us to take back our streets, our community. No one's going to keep us off our turf. Make him fight you. Courage, heart, it's what we're fighting for. It cannot be. And of God, and a killer of men. Man of God? You are not man! My church is my territory. What 
wasn't that amazing? Didn't you enjoy that? My God, that was, wow, uh, my church is my territory. Wow, I, I, I'm, I'm really blown away by that movie. I cannot wait, and I know that you cannot wait to see it. I want you to support that movie. I want you to go see it with your church, with your children, with your family. The movie is made for the entire family. It has an incredible message. Arturo Muchon, Projects, what are you doing next? The, the movie, it's, it's been a huge success in Hollywood, but now what's going to happen? What's, what's next for you? Well, we, we, I'm in the privileged position of having been uh, focusing on developing new scripts, new ideas, new characters like the pastor for the last four and a half years. So I have New heroes. Them, new heroes. Yes. New role models. Love that. For us and our next generations, our young people, young Hispanics in the United States and the rest of the world, people they can follow, they fall in love with their trajectory. So what's next? What's the next movie? The next what's movie the we're going to shoot in the fall, uh, the name is Sanctuary. And that's uh, another transformational journey about a policeman in Los Angeles who is down on his luck. He's lost his marriage, his wife, and uh, lost his family. And uh, he is in great darkness. And it's this uncovering a series of um, killings of uh, Hispanic immigrants in the outskirts of Los Angeles. In La Frontera? In La Frontera. Wow. So I won't give too much of the story. That's next. And then we have a prequel for the pastor. Pastor number will, two. Pastor number two. Ooh, is that's coming up. I, I'm, I, yeah. I, people that haven't seen the, the first one, and I know they want us to see the, the second one. That is, that is absolutely amazing. What's, what's for you in personally, in, in your personal life, in your walk with Christ, uh, if, if you can say something to somebody watching you, somebody, a dreamer, somebody that dreams big as, as you do, and, and it's in a dark place right now, you know, no money, no finances, take 30 seconds and just tell them something. This is your camera. Just what, what would you say to that person? Be happy. Always be happy. Know that God is with you and within you in every moment darkness or light he is there with you and dream dream big uh, if you're a, a a big dreamer like i was like i am if you're a hispanic dreamer if you're in this country or elsewhere keep dreaming big know that god is with you he will guide you always and that life it may be short but it's a beautiful journey amen Arturo Mushon, my God, you can you can really be a Are you sure you're not a preacher? Nah. <laughs> you, I see you preaching. You can definitely preach. And you know what? Um, I would love to invite you to another program. Would you like to come and join us? Because I, I think that you have so much to give. And I would love to come back and, and, and be with us one more time and, and talk to us a, a little bit more about, about that, that Hollywood that we need to change. We Christians need to change. And and and. and this, this was a joy to have this man today. I, it was absolutely unbelievable uh, just to spend some time with Arturo. But I want to end uh, this, this particular segment by, by telling each and every one of you that, that we need to support this type of movies, that we need to support Christian theater, that we need to support, support Christian television, that you need to support TVN. I mean, this, this is, is, is light in the middle, in a sea of darkness, and, 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 and murders and, and, and misery, TVN is that light that is shining all over the world. I want to really bless God and thank God for TVN and for what they're doing. And, and I really wanted to encourage you to support them in every way, shape, or form. So, so if you feel compelled to, um, uh, to uh, support this financially and to support us financially, TVN, uh, you can always send... Uh, uh, your offerings and, and, and your love giving is going to help us to reach out millions upon millions of people throughout the world. So uh, support, support that movie. Remember, the movie is called The Pastor. It's coming up in September uh, in theaters all over the United States and later on all over the world.